Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Public Works Committee meeting for Tuesday, April 1st. And we will not make any mentions about what today is as well. So um, some other folks have made some suggestions about what we can do for today. Um, so we'll pass on that those concepts, um, meaning April Fool's folks. That's for the TV audience. Um, roll call and determination of quorum. Brenda. Estes. Here. Nordstrom. Here. Roberts. Here. Scott. Here. Clayton. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like to remind everyone in the audience to please turn off their cell phones or to the vibrary position. And if you need to make a call or take a call, would you please take it out in the hallway? Thank you. Now I'll, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Motion by uh, Alderman Clayton to uh, adopt the agenda, second by Alderman Estes. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, thank you. Now is the time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the committee on any issue not limited to items on the agenda. Action will not be taken at this meeting on any issue not on the agenda except by placement on the agenda by unanimous vote of the alderman present. I have not received any uh, public comments. So we'll move on to the consent calendar which has items 1 through 24. And again, I have no public comments on items 1 through 24. Is there anyone on the uh, committee that wants to remove items 1 through 24? Alderman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Items number 23 and 24, please. Thank you. And I'd also like to pull item 15, please. Any other items? Not seen any? Uh, not seeing anyone else come up with some lights here. We will remove items 15, 23, and 24. And uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adopt the remainder of the consent. Second. Moved by Alderman Estes, second by Alderman Clayton to adopt the remainder of the agenda for the exceptions of items 15, 23, and 24. Moving on to item 15 is the State of South Dakota Joint Powers Financial Agreement between the Department of Transportation and the City of Rapid City for the South Dakota DOT Project NH0041, uh, located at the intersection of Omaha Street and 12th Street. Um, if I can ask the Public Works Department, is this you, Dale? Um, item 15 has to do with uh, what I was questioning about is pedestrian crossing and a U-turn at that location. Are we still going to be able to make a U-turn at that location? As far as I know, we will. It'd be no different than the signals out here on Fifth Street in Omaha. Um, the, the pedestrian signal timing accounts for the U-turn, so people can't make a U-turn against a pedestrian. If that's your concern, it should be addressed with the uh, not only the construction of the signal, but the signal timing plan that gets implemented. Thank you. And then uh, th that will still encourage uh, pedestrian crossing at that location as well. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. A uh, motion by Alderwoman Scott to approve the uh, Joint Powers Financial Agreement with a second from Alderman Roberts. Not seeing any other discussion. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 23 is. Let me get caught up here. Item 23 is approve a request from Mount Rushmore wa Wastewater Treatment Facility to dispose of waste at the Rapid City Water Reclamation Facility. And I'll uh, recognize Alderwoman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a motion to approve and retain the floor. You may have a motion to, motion made by Alderwoman Scott, second by Alderman Roberts to approve the request. And you have the floor. May I ask a question, uh, Mr. Wolstersdorf, please? You may. Hi, Terry. On this one, um, 
it looks like we're working with the region and, and they're still going to pay according to the contract and stuff, but how often does something like this happen that we end up taking wastewater from another entity? Thank you, Chairman. Not very often. It, it's usually when they're doing some type of a major repair work or they've had major equipment failures. Um, then occasionally they'll reach out to us and they need a, a place to dispose of, of that waste stream. So um, I'm trying to remember in my two and a half years here, I think we worked with the city of Somerset. Um, I believe Hot Springs were the other two major ones and now this one. I, I think there's only been about three, so not very often. And it looked according to the report that was attached to this that it's like less than 2% of our daily use, so it's going to be very minimal impact to our system itself. That's correct. Um, as long as our system is, is uh, operating um, at full capacity, we'll, we're in good shape. All right. It's actually a decent revenue stream for us. Thank you. I yield the floor. Thank you. And if I may make a comment, is I, I seem to remember this happening once before, a long time ago, when I was a, an employee out there. In a, it seemed to be very uh, accommodating to both sides on it. It worked quite well. Those in favor of the motion say, I, oh, I'm sorry, Brad Estes. Alderman Estes, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess you opened me up to a question. You said, I mean, and this is great to work with our region. When you say we're operating at full song, it's a good revenue stream. How are we, speaking of full song, how are we with that mat and the replacement of that in that pond, of the liner? I realized when I made that comment that was going to lead to that question probably. <laughs> so we're, we're actually uh, trying to finalize some quotes uh, for the replacement of the pond, and we're working through that process. So uh, ho hopefully here within the next uh, two to three weeks, I'll, we'll have some, some numbers to bring forward. Okay, thank you. And our crews are able to seem to take it in stride quite well. They're doing okay. Uh, thank you. I'm not seeing any other lights. I have a motion to approve. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Item 24 is authorized parks and recreation staff to apply for a recreation trails program grant to the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks Department to receive funds and grant if grants are awarded. And um, I guess I'd like to look to, uh, well, let's, let me go to uh, Alderman Scott first. Go, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, but you were going to do what I was going to do, and that's it. May we ask some questions of the Parks Department and uh, get some update on, on if this is an expansion of the work up there or if these funds will be used for the projects that are already slated to happen up there? Uh, Oh, Alex, you have, yes, if you will identify yourself. Yep, Alex D. Smith, Rapid City Parks and Recreation. Uh, great question. Um, these dollars that we're going after, the project right now is slated for $300,000 of trail work. That money is coming from the Vision Fund project. Um, in trying to leverage our money that we have and do the trailhead work and do the trail work, we're trying to get some of that money um, to designate specifically the trail components from the state because they have this recreational trail program that they've already invested in. Um, I believe in 2012 we completed about a $50,000 project up there. Um, so they're already kind of plugged into that project. Um, all the work's been done. It's just a matter of submitting an application and seeing if, they're, uh, if they have funds available to, to designate to this trail development. Um, and with that, we've kind of divided the... Uh, Vision Fund, um, roughly about 600,000, 300,000, 600 of that to trailheads, 300,000 to the trail development portion. Um, but with that, obviously, there's um, certain things in terms of the, the types of development that are going to go up, up there, natural surface being one of them, some paved surfacing kind of around Dinosaur Park. So if we can stretch our dollar um, and put more into it, we're going to be better off in the long run to get more of the, the overall master plan completed. Um, because obviously $300,000 doesn't go to the grand scheme and complete the whole thing up there. Obviously with Hanson Larson, that's kind of been under development for years and it's been added to and they fixed a lot of problems, erosion mitigation, all those types of things. So that's kind of what this money is earmarked for. So we're trying to just stretch it a little bit and get more done. 
Thank you, Alex. So basically this is already the project that's there, but you're actually trying to leverage some other funding sources in order to, yep. to make our dollar stretch for the city. Correct. I appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alderman Roberts, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So Alex, what I'm hearing here is the money that you have slated from the vision, you'll use that for your grant match if Correct. you get the grant? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. And the chair has a couple of questions for Alex. It's, it's, um, the, uh, the clarification, I just want to reiterate that this is not part of the previous program that we had experience here with recently with the TAP. So this is coming from a different division of the uh, state agencies. Yeah, it's coming from state game, fish, and parks. Thank you. And the other one is probably more questions along the line of, uh, of uh, for the Public Works Department, but I'll ask of you to begin with is the uh, wayfinding signage. Has there been any thoughts about putting wayfinding in there? Absolutely. Um, we're working on right now trailhead development, which is about at 65% design. Um, we've got some wayfinding features in that, some trailhead type signage. Obviously with the trail development, signage comes along with that, and that's always been part of the plan. Do these uh, wayfinding signage uh, include uh, Mount Rushmore Road, Jackson, Sheridan Lake Road, do they uh, include that as well? We haven't gotten to that level of detail yet in terms of what's actually going to be on those, but um, likely they're going to be all inclusive in terms of, you know, starting at Dinosaur, working our way to Florman, and directing people in and out of that, that whole facility up there. Okay. Um, from Mount Rushmore and obviously to Mount Rushmore. All right, terrific, thank you, because I think they, as the tourists come through the area, finding it will be beneficial. Thank you, Alex. Um, the motion in the floor is to approve the uh, app grant application. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. That concludes the uh, consent calendar. Now I'll entertain uh, any public comments on items 25 through 32, and I do not have any speaker request forms on items 25 through 32. Not, is there, I just want to make sure I'm not skipping anybody in the audience on any of these items. Item 25, so we'll close the public comment period. Uh, item 25 is the request to oversize of Elderberry Boulevard Orchard Meadows subdivision by Yashmin. Dream LLC, and I will look to the public work staff. Is that Dale? If you would please. Just Thank a you, Mr. Background. Chairman. A little background information. Uh, I don't know if you all had an opportunity to look at the attachments uh, to the agenda. There's a site plan as well as uh, an overall master plan of the development. Uh, I guess in a nutshell, the developer has requested oversizing for additional lanes uh, for Elderberry. I believe it's Elderberry Boulevard out there. Um, city code, Chapter 16, talks about oversizing, and it says the city council may choose to oversize uh, uh, infrastructure if it provides... Um, a benefit to large tracts of ground beyond what's going on here. Um, if you look at the staff recommendation, it was that this, in our opinion, staff's opinion is, is this road is just for the development's sake. It doesn't provide access to large tracts of land beyond um, the existing development or the proposed development. Therefore, that staff's recommendation is not approved to approve it. I see there's a representative of Dream Design here. I don't know if he wishes to speak to the issue. Uh, certainly, it's the council's decision whether or not you want to provide uh, oversizing payments for this request. Thank you, uh, Dale Tech. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, just to summarize what you said, the staff is recommending no uh, oversize agreement. Correct. Do you wish to make any comments? Car Can you uh, identify yourselves? Uh, I'm Kyle Trelor with uh, Dream Design International, and I'm representing Yasmin Dream LLC here today. Uh, just as uh, Dale explained, we're asking for two additional oversized reimbursement for two additional uh, 
lanes of pavement on Elderberry Boulevard. Uh, we met with the city a few weeks ago and, and we presented uh, the reasons why we felt that we were eligible for the oversize. Uh, I'll just kind of go through uh, those reasons with you. Um, uh, essentially, uh, our, our thought is, is that these two lanes are required to maintain the existing flow of traffic on Highway 44. Uh, given the existing zoning and land uses uh, presented at the site. Uh, essentially the only way to maintain the traffic flow, uh, the existing flow of traffic and the future flow of traffic on Highway 44. Uh, what was required to enter this site were these two additional lanes. They were identified by the traffic impact study that we had done. Um, and as such, given the regional benefit, we felt that uh, uh, an oversize was uh, reasonable. There's a few other added benefits. Uh, uh, in the long term, we'll be providing a second access uh, to uh, Pioneer Drive, which is uh, adjacent to, to the site, uh, which has got uh, 80 plus residences located on a, a one-way road. Uh, we'll be, with the addition of a stoplight uh, at this intersection, we'll be uh, creating a safer situation for traffic and uh, we're also not asking for any reimbursement costs on that signal. Uh, so the additional lanes uh, are meant to allow the traffic to store and then the lights will, will turn on and off as such to allow a certain amount of traffic to come through. To get the amount of traffic out of the site and onto Highway 44, uh, we need to add these additional lanes. Otherwise we start running into signal timing with Highway 44 and we could cause problems with traffic backing up in either direction. So as such, the additional lanes, uh, in our opinion, are required for uh, maintaining and improving regional traffic flow. Kyle, if I may ask a question, uh, and before I turn this over to Alderman Estes, um, it, essentially, the way I was reading the map that you provided is that you, we were looking at a few hundred feet of Elderberry Boulevard is what we're looking at for the oversize? That is correct. Uh, the first, I'm going to say approximately 500 feet of Elderberry extending south from Highway 44. Thank you. Um, stand by, you have some more questions. Uh, Alderman Estes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, as I look through this, I hear you talk about Added safety. So is there an, is has there been a traffic study by somebody that does traffic study to tell whether or not these two lanes are required or, or where do we? I don't know who should answer that, Dale or Mr. Trelor, but I guess I'm, thank you, Dale Tech, if you would. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, as part of the development plan um, the, with the commercial residential um, aspects of this development, they met the threshold where they were required to do a traffic impact study. So yes, a Registered traffic engineer did the study, identified what improvements were necessary to get the traffic in and out of this development uh, in a correct manner. I guess I would like to add what Mr. Trelor said. He indicates that while this is a benefit to Highway 44 by adding these lanes, it helps the traffic. Well, to me, it's a chicken and an egg thing. You wouldn't have a traffic issue on Highway 44 if not for this development. So um, I, I don't as a professional see the argument that these additional lanes are a benefit to Highway 44. It's the additional lanes are required because this development requires them. I hope that answers your question. If I may ask it, if I'm, yes, yes, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Do you have any rebuttal to that? And I guess I'm still trying to figure out is, did the traffic study recommend these lanes? And I guess I'd look for your answer to that question. The traffic too. study does identify uh, the need for these additional lanes. Uh, I guess my rebuttal uh, to this is that um, we're developing this land in accordance to the current uh, land use map, you know, the city zoning. Uh, the only way to develop or access this property and develop it to uh, 
what is identified through the current uh, uh, land use plan, the Rapid City Land Use Plan, is to uh, add these additional lanes as is identified in the traffic impact analysis. Uh, as such, this would be uh, a tract of land that could not be uh, developed without this road. Uh, there is no other access point. We're along Elkvale, Highway 44. Uh, therefore, to utilize this property to the zoning or to the uh, density that's been identified, it's, it's required. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. This brings up another question for me. Um, is this the only point of ingress and egress right now for this development? I mean, when, because uh, isn't there, I mean, once you meet a certain deal, isn't there supposed to be two points? Yes, uh, Kyle actually alluded to that. They're making a connection to a subdivision that's immediately to the east. It's an existing subdivision in the county. It's Pioneer Drive, I believe it's called. So they'll have a second means of emergency ingress and, and egress there. Um, so okay. yeah, well, that, there's the, the uh, requirement for 40 units. If there's more than 40 units, you've got to have a second means of ingress and egress, and they are providing that. Um, I, I guess I would like to also draw a comparison to other commercial mixed development. Walmart, for instance, south part of town, they had to do many different types of improvements based on their traffic impact study. It was not an oversized uh, request received by them. That was all part of their cost of doing business to accommodate the traffic that the, uh, the development uh, created. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield. Thank you. Uh, got a couple more lights here. If I may go to Alderman Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> now, speaking of Walmart there, Dale, um, I may be wrong, but wasn't a lot of that the uh, streets there covered under the TIF? Yes, there were some improvements under the TIF. However, many of the improvements along Stumer Road were not TIF expenses, uh, to my knowledge. That was turn lanes that they had put in based on their traffic impact study. Okay. That was just one point that I was going to bring up is you are not asking for any kind of TIF or anything on this development out there, are you, Kyle? That is correct. There, there is no TIF in place, nor are we uh, asking for one. And I do want to bring up one more thing while I'm thinking about it. I know when that road was, was first proposed, Originally, wasn't that uh, road asked for six inches of concrete, and then there was a change to seven inches or something like that? Uh, correct. Uh, uh, the geotechnical, you know, is part of a development. Uh, you're required to, when it reaches a certain threshold, you're required to uh, have a geotechnical study that uh, uh, provides road recommendations, you know, the depth of uh, paving, the depth of subbase. Uh, to provide for a certain level of services. Uh, the geotechnical report came back with a recommendation for, uh, in this case, six inches of concrete over uh, several inches of base. Uh, we were, uh, uh, because of other streets that have been installed or constructed at six inches, there, there's been some uh, issues with uh, them holding together. Uh, so we were asked to increase the depth by another inch to uh, provide a more stable road base, which uh, there again, we uh, took the full cost of that on ourselves to do that. So we, we created a thicker street section uh, at our own expense to provide a better road. Thank you, Kyle. And Dale, can I ask you why that was increased from six to seven inches? Absolutely. On a reinforced concrete road, uh, what you have, uh, I shouldn't say reinforced concrete road, but a concrete road, you have uh, dowel bars that go between the joints. And on a six inch pavement, a standard dowel bar, you don't have enough concrete cover over the dowel bar to provide the correct strength to go, to transfer that load from one panel to the next. Uh, the geotech report does not take that into consideration. They say if you're uh, in an unreinforced concrete road situation, you can use six inches of concrete over uh, whatever the base requirement is. In this case, following our city standards, you're required to provide that load transfer or those dowel bars between panels. 
and you can't have a six inch pavement with the standard dowel bar and that was the main reason that we requested that the additional inch of concrete pavement be done so that correct load transfer through the dowel bars from one panel to the next can occur as Kyle said we have had some roads in in the city of Rapid City where they've tried the six inch pavement hasn't worked they've cracked they failed it's uh, that's why we ask them to increase it to seven inch so we get the appropriate thickness so the dowel bar system works properly wouldn't most of those roads though be more in an industrial commercial type setting because I know there's not going to be a tremendous amount of heavy traffic over this road correct set of lane is the is the road that comes to mind and yes there are trucks that use that regularly as there are some delivery things down there there's also quite a bit of of uh, non-commercial traffic with Star of the West those are all cars that use that I can't speak to how many trucks are actually going to use this roadway I don't have the numbers memorized from the traffic impact study certainly with commercial businesses you're going to see some delivery vehicles trash vehicles things like that but uh, but to me professionally the getting the correct amount of concrete cover over the dowel bar system is what is of paramount importance and I, I can't understand that Dale um, <laughs> the one thing I have problems with is when the engineer comes in and says six inches we add seven and that adds roughly on a street that size a hundred thousand dollars that they're not asking for but now they're coming in and asking for the oversized costs and we're denying it. I mean, I can understand, you know, because from what I heard, and I don't know if this, can I ask you this directly, Kyle? I know before the inch of concrete was added, you weren't even going to ask for the oversizing costs, was my understanding. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Uh, I'll now go to Alderwoman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a recommendation. We send this to council without recommendation and retain the four, please. Motion made by Alderwoman Scott and second by Alderman Roberts to send with to council without recommendation. You still have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's a lot of good discussion. There's a lot of good information that has come to light today. Um, I need some time to think about this, which is why I'm recommending we, ha we take a little bit more time and send it to council on Monday night. Um, right now, I'm leaning towards the chicken before the egg type theory, and I, uh, I'm leaning towards supporting staff on this, but I will be researching this more before Monday night. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if I can ask the two participants, Kyle and uh, all, uh, City Engineer Tech, if you could bring f um, some information forward about First of all, from your study that you've d done, if there's any rationale or policy or uh, rules, laws, uh, something that is uh, uh, compelling the, uh, the initiative to bring forward a, a uh, oversized request, if you've got any uh, compelling information that we can use on that. And then, uh, uh, Mr. Tech, if, you, if you've got anything in your what is it called, the manual codes or your ordinance policies that you've uh, explained to us in the past that can give me some, some supportive information that says that w we do not have the uh, capability of going with an oversized agreement. I think if that's the two bits of information I would need by Monday evening. Any other comments uh, from the f floor? Seeing none. It's, uh, the motion is to uh, send to council without recommendation. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, item 26 is a request to connection to extended city water and sewer mains or transitional holding tanks with annexation application submittal and amended oversized agreement. And this is brought forward by Lazy P. Uh, Land Company Incorporated, and I'm not seeing any of the applicants here at this time. Anybody here to speak on the behalf of the applicant? I'm not seeing any, and not seeing any volunteers from staff, so I'll recognize Alderman Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'll make a, a uh, 
recommend this recommendation we deny this. <laughs> Motion has been made to deny the request for connection and uh, seconded by Alderman uh, uh, Clayton. Not seeing any other discussion, those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Item 27 is correction to comments made by Councilwoman Bonnie Peterson and Public Works Director Terry Waltersdorf at the uh, February 25th, 2014 Public Works Committee meeting. And this is also brought by Lazy P Land Company Incorporated. And again, not seeing any participants from Lazy P. The chair will entertain a motion. Recognize Alderwoman Scott. I'd like to make a motion to acknowledge the comments as submitted. Motion is to acknowledge the comments uh, as submitted by Lazy P. Is that correct? Okay, all right. And a second by Alderman Roberts. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Item 28 is to confirm the city commitment and schedule for MP203 for Lazy P Land Company. Uh, again, the chair will uh, entertain a motion. Alderman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a motion to acknowledge the request. Second. Motion made by Alderman Scott, second by Alderman Roberts to acknowledge the comment from Lazy P. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, motion carries, thank you. Item 29 is agreement between the City of Rapid City and Pennington County Auditor for the collection of stormwater drainage utility fees. And the chair will now recognize Alder Woman Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make an amendment to this um, proposal or this agreement at this time. And I'd like to make the amendment to pretty much follow everything on here. I've been talking to Mr. Wolstersdorf about this, but basically I'd like to see this limited to three years as we get our feet underneath us while implementing this new storm drainage utility fee. Um, and then also I'd like to see um, during this three year period of working with the county because they are willing to work with us to get this um, uh, out there and the fees scheduled and collected and put back to the city, we do need a mechanism in order to get this on the property tax assessments or bills that go out. Um, but we're all kind of walking on timid water or unfamiliar ground here. So um, I'd like to make a, 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 a proposal that we limit this to three years, but also put in the stipulation that the county property is also assessed the city charges the county and the county charges the city back the equivalent of the amounts proposed to cover the county's portion of the drainage utility for this three-year period so that we can get a better understanding of what it actually is going to cost. And I realize that was a motion and a lot of talk, so. I, I'm trying to understand the second part of the motion is to, um, I don't have a second just yet. Uh, Okay, I, motion is made by, by uh, Alderman Scott to amend the uh, uh, the agreement to three-year contract, and we will now go into a little further discussion on the uh, stipulation that you're proposing here. Do uh, I still have the floor, Mr. Chair? You certainly do. Thank you. Terry, would you be able to, based on what I've kind of mangled here, would you be able to re-clarify this as, uh, per our discussion earlier as far as have it ready for Monday night? Yes, I believe we can we can accommodate those changes. Um, be a, a, a change to the uh, last sentence in subsection six. That's the one that talks about the city not assessing the stormwater drainage utility fee in exchange for the services from the county. And then um, section seven deals with with the uh, terms, the number of years. So we'll change that to three years. And it, we'll work on the wording on that subpart six. I, I, I think the term assess is probably the key word. It's one of those deals where we want to calculate the fees. We want to know the specific amount to each parcel, but we wouldn't technically file the assessment because once that's assessed, it ends up on the tax. It's a tax bill then, and the only way to eliminate it is through the equalization hearing process. So we'll work on the wording there. I, I know what you're shooting for, and I, we can we can massage that wording here and, and get in, um, get the updates linked for the council agenda. I appreciate that. Thank you, Terry. I yield the floor. 
Thank you. Chair will now recognize Alderman Estes. Thank you, Chair. And I, and I guess I want to, as I understand the motion as I seconded it for discussion purposes, is, is that what this will do is is uh, enhance the transparency so we know what, what, the, what the true cost is. At the end of three years, we can take a look at it, what, what we're paying and what we're foregoing in this, in this arrangement, in this uh, joint venture between the two public entities. Thank you. Public Works Director Dale, uh, Dale uh, Terry Walterstorff, starting to look at Dale here on my wording here. <laughs> so, um, Terry, if I may ask a question about the, uh, uh, the transparency part. Does this require staff to start logging the times that they will be doing, the, providing the service? Meaning that they, uh, our, our city staff, no, would they have to start logging that time? No, this is really the, the staff time is more on the county side right now. They'll, they'll be the ones that have the, the time and costs associated with the database and the collection process. So uh, we'll certainly ask them to kind of collect and keep track of some of their costs associated with that. And then, like I said, once the database is finalized here this fall, we'll know a specific drainage fee associated with the county parcels. And, and I'm sure they will uh, track their own. Correct. Yep. Thank you. So not seeing any other lights coming up. Is there, uh, let's see, the motion is to amend to a three-year contract and work up new language for uh, subsection six of the uh, agreement so that it is more apparent to, to transparent on what the, the costing will be for the city and the county. Those in favor of the, uh, the motion say aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, item number 30 is a resolution of necessity for acquisition of public right of way over private property for the purpose of constructing a street and other public infrastructure through the exercise of eminent domain. And this is a portion of a Enchanted Pines Drive. And the uh, chair will now recognize city engineer Dale Tech. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I'd like to talk about, I guess it'd be items 30 and 31 together. They're the, the same project, uh, two different property owners. I just want to give you an update where we're at over the course sure. of the last year. Uh, city staff has been working with the property owners to try to reach agreement to um, um, an easement to right of way agreement to acquire some property to extend a water main, or I'm sorry, a sewer main. Um, We've been to the council a number of times. The last direction that we had was to get the property appraised. Um, we did that back in October, received the appraisals in January, submitted the appraisals, gave copies to the property owners, met with them uh, on a couple occasions. City staff did offer the full appraised value of the property to the property owners as compensation for the the uh, right-of-way or easement that the city is requesting. Both property owners had indicated uh, verbally that that was not going to be sufficient, that they wanted the full value plus some additional free hookups to the sewer. Uh, subsequently, city staff has met with the city's attorney's office. I believe the city attorney's office is going to send one last letter to the applicants uh, with a written offer just to get a, a formal response. Um, and I guess my recommendation still that the council should approve these two requests for the um, resolution of necessities for the acquisition. Joel may have something to add. I, I am first of all looking to the city attorneys uh, see if there's any other additional comments and then I'll go to the council. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I think it's appropriate after discussing it with Public Works, we were gonna send one more um, letter to try to get this resolved without going through condemnation. Um, it's our intent to have an executive session on Monday night and probably talk to you about this a little bit. The under pending litigation and contractual matters, what our position is and why staff is, is really feels important taking the position we're taking. And hopefully what we would like you to do is approve this so if our final attempt to resolve this does is not successful rather than have to come back again because this frankly has dragged out for a long time and public works would like to proceed with the project that we would then uh, file the necessary paperwork to 
proceed with condemnation and uh, what we would do then is deposit the money based on the fair market value of the property per the appraisal with the court and receive title to the property so public works can move forward with it and then the only issue really for the court to resolve is how much compensation the owners would be entitled to so we'll talk about it more but but that's kind of where staff is and where we would like to go with this okay thank you um chair will now recognize alderwoman scott Based on that information that's provided by Mr. Deltek and Mr. Joel Ladin, I make the motion to approve items number 30 and 31. Motion is made by uh, Alderwoman Scott to, to proceed with the uh, eminent domain on items 30 and 31. Mm -hmm. Seconded by uh, Alderman Clayton. Is there any other questions? Alderman Estes. Thank you, Chair. Joel, when, when our chair uses the word eminent donate. We're not, st this is just a statement of, we're, we're not starting that process yet, are we? I mean, we d it would take, a, wouldn't that take another meeting in order to approve that? No, what we're asking is that it not take another meeting, that if we are not able to reach an agreement on the terms that we provided, I mean, we've offered to pay them the full okay. price per the appraisal. Um, they want additional hookups. Well, let's, let's be honest, those have value. So we've been in discussion about that. I'd prefer to go into the value argument and stuff in an executive session to talk about our, our negotiating strategy because this, frankly, does set a precedent for future acquisition. But if, if we are not able to reach an agreement, we would want to be able to proceed with filing the paperwork to condemn this property. Now, it's a future right-of-way. So we would be condemning a whole right of way that we would then hold until the road was needed to be constructed. Right now we don't need the road, but we do need the utilities through there. And there is actually a problem with one of the houses in this neighborhood and some sewage, which is why we are looking at um, putting the utilities in now, even though we're not ready for the road. But what we would do is acquire the full right of way so that we would have that in the future when it's needed and not have to go back and acquire additional rights from them in the future. Thank you for clearing that up because I, I didn't understand it that way. I appreciate it, thanks, I yield. Thank you, um, appreciate the question as well. Uh, yes, yes, could you come up to the microphone and identify yourself please? My name's uh, Shane Schreiner. We have, uh, I guess it'd be the east uh, part of that property that they want to condemn. And um, forgive me, I'm not very good at speaking in front of people, but um, I guess what I wanted to let you guys know too, what our position is, is we've um, been wanting to work towards this to get it done. The thing is, is they come up with the appraisal price of the property and the last time we met with uh, Dell Tech um, we knew we were gonna have to pay the seven thousand dollars for additional oversizing uh, for sewer for downstream sewer that's been oversized and what we want to do with this piece of property is put one house on it and then when we met with them again he mentioned that with putting that sewer through that we would be assessed another $7,500 for that. And I guess what we wanted was we were fine with getting the money on the appraisal, paying the downsize fee, but not paying the 7500 for the sewer. Because the way it is now, we can hook into the sewer, you know, as it is. If that makes any sense, I don't know. <laughs> Could you, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I missed your name again. Shane Schreiner. What was your address? What's your address that you're uh, located at? You mean where the property is? Yes. I'm not even aware what the address is, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm trying to f put together which property you're representing. Well, if you look at it, um, where you come up in Chana Pines Drive, from, uh, well, let's say all the way down from 5th Street, 
and you hit Enchanted Pines Drive, you got to go on Stumer, then you got to go on Enchanted Pines Drive again, you're heading to the west. Our property is right there. And then it goes like 330 feet, and then that's Larry Stevens' property, and then it connects with Enchanted Pines Drive again. Okay, yep, yeah, yep, got it. Yes, I understand. Yep, exactly. I was just trying to figure out where your location was at, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're the half of this project that's getting done. Larry Stevens is the far west, we're the east. Okay, I understand. There, I'm not seeing any other lights from the council. Alderman Estes, do you have any other follow-up? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, yeah, I do, because that didn't clear it up. That made it even more confusing for me, so I could... I mean, he's talking about two seven thousand dollars. Is there a way to clear this up? If I may, I'll try to clarify this. The, Mr. There's, Tech. there's a six thousand eight hundred dollar existing connection fee for sewers that were built way downstream, not even near this property. So anyone upstream of this has to pay that because the people downstream paid to, to get those sewers built upstream. Uh, in addition to that, obviously we're building about. 120 to 160 thousand dollars worth of sewer improvements across these two properties. Uh, typically, what we would do is create a construction fee that would uh, be recouped from the, the benefiting properties. In this case, this is a source water protection area, and the council has previously capped the connection fee to, at seven thousand five hundred dollars. So the first fee he's talking about is an existing construction fee that was adopted by resolution by a previous council. City staff has no authority to waive that. It's, it's on the books. We can't do anything about it. The $7,500 fee that was previously identified for source water protection things, once again, staff doesn't feel that we've got any authority to waive that. So typically, if we build this project, the two property owners there would have to pay $7,500 each to hook up to that. He's alluding to the fact that there's sewer that exists that he actually stubbed out up to his property line and he believes that he can just hook into that. The way our criteria manual states is if you're hooking into a sewer, you need to extend it to the, to the farther limits of your property so the next person can grab it and go. That's how this town was developed, is one person takes it to one point to the end of their property, not the beginning of their property, so the next person can keep going and going and going. So I, I think if I can summarize what Shane is saying is they understand that they have to pay the $6,800 fee for the, all the previous sewer connection fees or construction fees that were out there. They don't want to have to pay that extra $7,500 for the sewer that gets extended across their property. I think that's what he's saying. Yes, I am because, um, you know, when you when they come up with that appraisal fee of the land being worth thirty thousand dollars, it doesn't take into account an additional seventy five hundred dollars to hook into the sewer. And you know, we've been checking into uh, this stuff. I guess we're getting kind of actually we've really been left in the dark on this. But um, because we, I was gonna we were supposed to get a letter. I guess it's coming still. We've been looking forward to, to see what our options are. You know, I coming here, I didn't even know exactly what was going to happen. But anyways, like, I guess what I was trying to get to, and I mean, I think her name is Nicole, uh, our engineer at Sperlick has talked to her, and they had mentioned something about $358 per acre. I think, well, $568 per acre for the oversizing. So, I mean, that's a different number because we, we have 7.8 acres. And um, so that's a different number. And then also the part of extending the water and sewer across the front of our property, there is, there is enough front. It's a whole piece of property. You know, it, there's not... It's not like the sewers here and then our front of our properties, you know, it would go, it would go right through the middle of it. And so, anyways, I, I guess that's all I had to say. I just, when we get the appraisal of $30,000, $30, we still have to pay $7,500. So it really means that we get 
2,504. Understand. Um, all of us, thank you. Um, let's see. At this moment, I've still got the um, motion is to proceed with exercise of eminent domain and uh, recognize the city attorney, Joel Landy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just in response to some of that, I, I understand why he feels like he's getting less for his property. But if this were a planning situation, the, the land for the right of way would have been dedicated at no expense to the city. The lot buyers would get no money for that and you would still have to pay the connection fee. So the very fact that we're paying to acquire the right of way in this situation is unusual. Frankly, most of our right of way is acquired through the planning process and we don't compensate anybody for it. We have been willing to pay less, factor that in, and say, if you don't want to pay the connection fee, that's fine. We'll waive the connection fee, but then we're not going to pay you the full value for the property. I mean, the argument on the other side of that is if we pay the full value, what the appraisal says this land we're acquiring is worth, plus we give them a free hookup that everyone else would have had to pay, whether or not they had been compensated for their land, then they are receiving a windfall in that they're receiving an extra $7,500 in this case. That is setting a precedent. Now, the question is whether or not we want to do that or set that precedent or not. Staff at this point does not want to set that precedent. So given the option, and we'll be laying it out more clearly, as Mr. Schreiner said, that my staff, I and my staff met with Public Works at the end of last week, and Wade Nyberg is drafting a letter to the property owners that I think better lays out. These are what your options are. But staff is not going to support both paying full value for the property and providing the benefit of a hookup they would otherwise have to pay for that costs $7,500. So that is why we are asking you to approve the action we requested. Just one additional comment. Yes. I have, um, in doing that, there's, um, like I say, I, I don't know where we're at in this process because we haven't even got the, our option letter yet. So, and the other thing that he says, if, you know, if we were going to develop this property, we would just have the land, but see, we're not doing that. We're just, we got this parcel of property that is wanting to be taken from us. We, you know, we didn't, we're not coming in and saying we want to develop this land, give us money for it. You know, we're just saying this is our piece of property. We wanted to put one house on it, connect the sewer. We will, we'll pay the sewer fee like a normal house would, like whatever, two, three, four hundred dollars, but not the seventy five hundred. Okay. Thank you. I think we've heard every side of the story. And so the chair will now ask for proceed to a vote is that we would be uh, starting the process for exercise of eminent domain. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed. Thank you. Motion carries. Item 32 is uh, seek authorization to proceed with repairs to public infrastructure with big, within Big Sky subdivision. And I'm going, yay, yay, all right, we can get this started. Hopefully, gentlemen, I'll look to the Public Works Department to give us a little background. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I believe attached to the agenda was uh, both in the summary section of the, uh, of the agenda here and then the attached memo, I think, kind of lays out our plan for moving forward you know the the litigation is obviously time consuming and um, we have some streets out there that are to be quite frank beyond the state of repair in some cases in some places we're looking at complete reconstruction um, in fact received calls in the last week on people who had done some damage to cars driving over some of the the dips and areas out there so um, we are looking for some approval or, or direction for moving forward um, if, if this item is approved, uh, then staff would try to pinpoint the exact funding source. You know, we're looking at about that $1.1 million. Um, and really the two funding sources we have, in my opinion, would, would either be some undesignated cash available in the CIP um, or potentially the utility support fund. I really can't justify moving projects off the current CIP list. Um, we, we, we have needs everywhere in this community, but um, 
we definitely would like to proceed moving forward. Uh, keep in mind that we would not expend any funds right now on those roads that are outside of city limits until that annexation occurs. And this, in my opinion, would be a, a carrot uh, to offer to those to those property owners out there that annex into the city. We've secured the funding source, and we are ready to proceed with road improvements. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Chair Olnaro recognized Joel Landine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff internally has been talking about this for a while, and this is a project that's very important to the mayor. So he asked Terry and I to look into it and try to get something done. And this would really be our proposal. In fairness, it was a number of years. The problems developed fairly quickly after the, the subdivision was built. And it took a number of years for the city to even file suit. And now the litigation has dragged on for several more years. I know initially everyone probably thought, well, we'll wait till the litigation works itself out and then we'll see where we're at and decide how to proceed. But to be quite honest, the litigation could go on for a number of years and it's probably past time that the city do something, especially about the streets that are within the city limits. It is somewhat complicated, as Terry alluded to, by the fact that some of the streets are outside the city limits. If you approve this, how we would resolve that is public works and probably I would be involved with setting up neighborhood meetings and discuss with people located outside of city limits but on the streets that we've identified as problems annexing into the city and then we would legally be able to expend any funds that you came up with to fix those streets as well and ultimately it doesn't really hurt us in the litigation because then we'll have clear damages it won't be speculative at that point how much we've expended but just between finishing the litigation, any appeals, and then frankly trying to collect on any judgments if we receive any, it's going to be a number of years before we had any money. And if ultimately we do collect money, then that can frankly just go back into the funds or into the streets and be used on other projects in the future. So uh, I would support or ask the council to support proceeding with fixing the streets out there and, and identifying the funding sources. Thank you. The chair and I'll recognize Alderman Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Terry. And thank you, Joel, for working on this. We've been talking about this for a few years now, and it will be nice to get a hard number fixed. So going into the future, we have that number for litigation. But also, Terry, I want to say I'm amazed at how low the cost of this project came in from your numbers. I thought it was going to be a lot higher than that. Um, and it's amazing we have a funding source. So I just recommend we get this and get it done. And those people out there have been dealing with this long enough. So thank you for all your hard work. Chair, I'll recognize uh, Alderman Estes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Terry, I do have a question because you use, you know, adding the 250 and the 800. 60, uh, 860 being out of the city limits. If we move forward now, we could only move forward on the stuff that's in the city limits. Is that is that a cost effective way, or do we? I mean, because I don't know how long it would take to to talk to the people that are affected by the streets outside. So, I mean, are we going to try to do this in a two phase approach? Do the inside of the city first, while we work with the people outside the city limits, because. Um, and will that add cost to the deal? Because, I mean, I, I think we need to get going on these repairs. I, I think it would be negligible okay. cost difference. I mean, it would be a pretty sizable project to do all as one project. So and if we're right now looking at a $250,000 project to start on the stuff, uh, do you have a, a, a funding source targeted? Again, the two I mentioned. I mean, it's... We are reviewing some what I would call undesignated cash right now. Pauline has, has um, recalculated uh, some of the current cash that hasn't been allocated to the different uh, CIP items. In fact, I think uh, that will be coming back to the CIP committee here probably at the, next, um, at the next CIP committee. So there's potentially some funding available there, uh, but, but other department directors have some additional needs too. Um, so we're, we're really looking at all those needs citywide, and so you got to kind of balance this need with some of those. And the other funding source we potentially go to at times would be the utility support fund. Uh, there's some funds that haven't been allocated to specific projects yet. A lot of times those are more uh, water and sewer related, but at times we do go to that fund for some street projects. 
So would you be prepared to come to us Monday night with a with a better, uh, a preferable funding source from your perspective? I would prefer to wait until we, we have an opportunity to see whether this will go through the CIP or the utility support fund. I, I don't know that I will have that on Monday or nor do I really need it on Monday yet. I think this will get the ball rolling and we can we can start the process. Thank you. I yield. Thank you. Uh, primarily what this does is just give staff the authorization to proceed uh, and um, so, so we just don't want to make we want to make sure we're getting the a horse before the cart so on this so thank you for the clarification uh, the chair will recognize Alderwoman Scott thank you mr. chair that's all I was going to do was clarify this with a question to mr. Wolstersdorf please you may proceed thank you um, Terry as the chairman said, you're just asking for authorization for staff to proceed looking into all the options and then also looking to see, as Mr. Estes suggested, whether it's a two-phase or a one-phase. But this is just to get the ball rolling because, as uh, Alderman Roberts stated, this has been going on for those property owners out there for a long time. And now it's basically you're just looking for the city council to um, basically stand up and say yes we support we're going to go ahead and look for ways to fix these streets out there that's correct and then every option or every um, request whether it's a bid request authorization to seek bids or anything else that still will become before the City Council for approval each step of the way that's correct those will those will all come back through through the council for approval thank you <laughs> the, the chair wants to just remind the remainder of the committee that we do not have a motion on the floor just yet. So um, I would encourage, please proceed with a motion. Alderman Clayton. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I've been asked to stick my neck out, so <laughs> I think I can get to five foot seven if I do that. And uh, I'd like to make the motion that we approve. A motion made by uh, Alderman Clayton to seek authorization to proceed and a second by Alderwoman Scott. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed. I would be strangling them if they did. Thank you. Um, the motion carries. Having no other business in front of the committee. Second. Motion by Alderman, Alderwoman Scott to adjourn. Second by Roberts. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed. <laughs>